Ahoy there, folks. I'm Captain Benzi, formerly known as the Bulawayo Buccaneer, and that formally is kind of what I want to talk about today. For those of you who've been subscribed to this channel for a while now or have been watching previous videos, you may have noticed I've not put anything up in about a year now. You might also recognise that this, this is not Zimbabwe. In fact, on a clear day, that's France. I'm back in the UK. And I didn't just want to let this channel fizzle out and die without a fond farewell, because I think I kind of owe it to the people who have watched these videos and have enjoyed things to kind of explain where I've been, talk about what's happened and where I'm going to be going from here. Hopefully you'll enjoy this little flight of fancy and me getting to talk about myself on camera just for a little bit of time. So the Bulawayo Buccaneer channel was a bit of an interesting one for me. It wasn't something I ever really intended to do. I was making YouTube content about video games and paying my bills through that, but I kind of decided I wanted to try my hand at making something a little bit more visual, a bit more vloggy, talking about myself, my experiences and my life, and being a Brit living in Zimbabwe, that seemed like a really good opportunity. It was done purely as a vanity project at first, but it seemed to resonate with quite a few people. Some of those videos absolutely exploded and did better than my main channel has done. And it was fantastic just getting to reach out and talk to people who, like me, had a passion for the beautiful country that is Zimbabwe. Some of those were Zimbabweans still living in the country. Some of them were Zimbabweans who had, for whatever reason, moved abroad and built a new life elsewhere. Some were, like me, people who had just experienced Zimbabwe and fallen in love with the magic of it all. Well, now, the reason I came to Zimbabwe I think is probably worth starting with for those of you who don't know. Basically, I was working for a travel company right here in the UK and I came out to South Africa and Zimbabwe to have a look at some of the holiday properties that we were selling, some of the lodges that people could visit and the tours that we were offering. And on the third night in Zimbabwe, I met a beautiful woman who I fell head over heels madly in love with. And that was June 10th. By November 4th of that same year, I'd arrived into Vic Falls with two suitcases to my name and Carrie and I were married, kicking off seven wonderful years living in a country that was far beyond my wildest dreams. It's a hard place to live for sure. On one hand, Zimbabwe is beautiful. The people are fantastic. The just natural environment of the, the country is spectacular. It's hard to compare to anything else I'd ever experienced in life. On the other hand, it can be an incredibly difficult place to live. Having to deal with things like hyperinflation, having to deal with a corrupt government and a lot of issues that we had, like for example our copper electricity cables and things like that, were real challenges for me. But something that I feel like I learned a lot from over those seven years. I feel as a person, Zimbabwe really helped me to grow and experience things and actually discovered that I could do things that I wasn't even aware that I could do. And that's powerful and that's something I will keep with me always. For seven years, Carrie and I lived together. We lived in Victoria Falls for a span. I worked for a travel company there before it downsized and I lost my job and then started up my YouTubing career. We then moved to Bulawayo during COVID when she lost her job, I lost the bit of work that I'd had on the side there and our landlord threatened to take our cottage away from us and kind of tried to slide that out from under us in order to renovate it and start using it as a lodge. Completely illegal, we did fight a court case and win, but at the end of the day we still ultimately up sticks and moved back to Carrie's family home in Bulawayo. And thus began three very difficult years. Living in a house that you are essentially the only person paying towards, but yet you have very little say in, it's always going to be difficult. And I kind of understood the situation. It was a family home. I wasn't going to have any real say or sway in how that home operated. I also knew that we were going to be looking after Carrie's niece and nephew, her sister's two kids. Um, and they were wonderful kids, brilliant to live with, great to be around. I got on with both of them fantastically. So again, can't complain about any of that. There were issues with the house. This was a difficult point for me to kind of handle because I was desperately trying to fix these issues whilst being the only person really earning in that household. That's not to say that Carrie didn't try. She did get a couple of jobs here and there, um, working for a cafe, doing some graphics design for a company in Victoria Falls, and just some odd jobs here and there. Actually ended up starting up a successful home bakery business where she was making cupcakes and ice cream cakes and things like that and selling to the local community, which seemed to go really well. But it did take a toll on our relationship. Perhaps my inability to adapt, perhaps due to my autism and ADHD, recent diagnoses, 
and perhaps just due to the complexities of the situation and me just not being able to adjust to that in general. It, it's a tough situation to be in. And in February of 2023, Carrie and I had a very difficult conversation where she announced that, simply put, she wasn't sure how she felt about me. At that point, discussions were made about me possibly moving out, but trying to fund my own house in Bulawayo and not having any sort of social network around me was always going to be difficult. I don't think I could have been capable of doing that had I really wanted to. There was talk of me coming back to the UK for a few months just to give her some space to think and figure out what she wanted in life. It was a difficult time with me sleeping on the mattress in the living room while she took the bedroom. Lots of arguments, lots of very uncomfortable conversations, only for me to then find out that it wasn't actually quite as simple as she had made out. In fact, I discovered evidence, several pieces of evidence that all pointed towards one conclusion that I was too blindly in love with Carrie to even consider as a possibility. When I saw red flags and confronted Carrie about them, she always had an explanation, which at the time felt valid. It was only after I moved back to the UK on a possibly temporary basis, having left a lot of my things behind, but leaving my friends behind, leaving my cats behind, my dogs behind, leaving my life behind was always going to be difficult. And it very quickly transpired that she had been having an affair with one of our friends. And I'm not going to get into the details of all of this because it ultimately doesn't matter and I don't want to be accused of mudslinging on YouTube, but I kind of feel it's worth talking about because it was a difficult time for me where I spent months and months from that February date right through to August when she announced that she wanted a divorce, feeling like I was the source of every problem in that relationship. And that did a number on me mentally. That really did a number on me mentally. So discovering that basically she had been having an affair since October 2022 made that a little bit easier to handle, as stupid as that sounds. In doing all of this, I moved back here to my hometown of Deal in the UK on the southeast coast. I've been able to reconnect to sort of the more maritime side of my life, the sultan prine of the sea, the smuggling heritage of this town, hence the buccaneer in this channel's title. Reconnecting with old friends, seeing family that I hadn't seen in years, wandering places that I hadn't been around in over half a decade. I've come back, I've lost an awful lot of weight. I've gone from an extra large shirt and 36 inch waist down to a 30 inch waist and a medium shirt size. I've been working out, hitting up the gym. I've been improving myself in all kinds of ways. I've stopped biting my fingernails after an entire lifetime of doing that. And that, silly as it sounds, feels absolutely fantastic. I've been going down to our local open mic night, singing sea shanties, playing the Botherin, doing karaoke rock songs and, exploring different facets of me as a human being. I spent seven long years being the half of a marriage, the half of a marriage that was ultimately the pillar in it all. As much as I want to give uh, Carrie credit for being my rock and my support for seven years, don't get me wrong, she absolutely was for a lot of it. I do look back now and see that as much as I loved Zimbabwe, as much as that country means the world to me still, wasn't the right place for me. That marriage wasn't the right thing for me. And me spending so many years being the only provider, the only person supporting and not feeling like I was getting much of that back by the end of things in Bulawayo. Stepping away and discovering who I am as a single man, as an individual human being, not a half of a marriage, has been so powerful. I've been touring and gigging a little bit here and there and finding that I have a voice where I can sing, where I can talk to people between songs in my set. Finding ways to interact with people and get myself out there in ways that I just didn't know that I could. I traveled to Bristol last week and had a great time down there with my cousin, exploring the city and meeting new people and having a really good time. I've planned trips to places like Amsterdam to meet an old friend of mine, to other places around the world that I'm now working towards as a goal, saving up my money to go traveling. And that's something I wanna come back to for those of you who are interested. I went to Iceland for four days, going out to FanFest to meet the development team for EVE Online, the game that I cover on my main channel. And I did that all on my own. Went out there and traveled and made content and explored the world at my own pace with just me in mind. But where does this leave this channel? Being a pet project, which I'm okay with. 
I want to use this now to showcase things that I love. I want this to be a side project where I can record footage of my town and my local area, of places that I visit, and I can talk about history, I can talk about maritime history, if that's, you know, possible, because it's one of my big loves in life. I can just talk about places I'm going, things I'm seeing, experiences that I as a human being are having. Rather than this channel being about a random Brit living in Zimbabwe and all the wonders that that was about, Instead, this channel is going to be about a random Brit struggling with autism and ADHD, but making the best of life and experiencing the world to the fullest of my capabilities. So it might have some music, it might have some travel, it might have some local history. It's just gonna be a channel about me. And if you enjoy that, then awesome. Fantastic, I'd love to have you along for the ride. If that's not your thing, don't feel guilty for unsubscribing. I know that most of this community signed up to this channel to see me talk about Zimbabwe, to showcase this wonderful country. Obviously, I can't do that anymore. But I'm gonna have fun doing some other things instead. And if you do join me, I'd love to have you on board. Anyway, folks, thank you for indulging a lengthy rant about this one. And I do just want to end this by saying, look, I don't want to be talking crap about my ex-wife. I still talk to her family a lot. I still have a lot of love and care for them. And yes, what Carrie did, did very much damage me as a human being, but I passed through that. I've come out on the other side stronger and happier than I've been in a long time. 